Six administrative protocols under the article on the so-called discrediting of the Russian army have been filed with the Predgorny District Court of the Stavropol territory of Russia against Larisa Kuznetsova. The Stavropol resident faces a fine of 180 to 300,000 rubles, and 65-year-old Bagomed Bagomedov was fined 15,000 rubles by the Sergokolinsky District Court of Dagestan for publications on Facebook. Moscow continues to punish Russian citizens for their anti-war position and religious views. In the entire territory of the North Caucasus, people are kidnapped on religious grounds. They are forbidden to pray wherever they want, religious literature is banned, and criminal cases are fabricated. Hundreds and thousands of people are sitting in Russian prisons today on fabricated criminal cases. The Kremlin regime systematically violates the rights and freedoms of the country's citizens. In particular, this applies to the rights and freedoms of indigenous peoples. If Putin and Russia in the 1990s were exclusively a Chechen problem, subsequently this same country and the same system that was built in Russia, today it is not only a problem for Ukraine, but also a problem for the entire international community. Moscow has sent hundreds of thousands of representatives of indigenous peoples to the war against Ukraine. Human rights activists call the Kremlin's policy towards the Buryat people ethnocide. Buryatia ranks second in the Russian Federation after Krasnodar territory in terms of the number of people killed in the war against Ukraine. Of course, we have a great strategy that we have a lot of Buryats who participate in the war on the side of Russia. But we would like to apologize for these unreasonable people. But we are making every effort to stop their participation in this war, turn their attention to their homeland, to build their own state. After the start of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, indigenous people's movements for the right to self-determination intensified in the Federation. Organizations such as the League of Free Nations and the Forum of Free Peoples of Post-Russia have appeared. Their goal is the decolonization of the Russian Federation and the independence of indigenous peoples. We all realize that the point of no return for our nations within Russia has already passed. Now perhaps we have the last chance in history when we can save our nations, preserve and revitalize our states. We realize that it will not be easy, but we know what potential our nations have and that the thirst for independence is still alive in our people. The result of Russia's war in Ukraine will be the colonization of the state's territory, experts believe, and the representatives of the federations in the Indigenous peoples have already started their path to freedom and independence. They are fighting in volunteer battalions of the Ukrainian armed forces. The International Legion of Territorial Defense of Ukraine includes the Dagestan Volunteer Battalion named after Imam Shamil, battalions named after Johar Dudaev, Hamzat Gelaev and Sheikh Mansur and others. Reported by Sergei Kulas, Victoria Smirnova, UATV News.